Okay. It's all you, Trevor. Take uh, it away. Okay, well, welcome to the future. <laughs> it's actually Sunday lunchtime in New Zealand. So thanks to the wonders of the internet, now I'm streaming to you live from the future. Uh, and time zones, of course. Um, uh, our session will conclude uh, a quick opening video from Matthew Lehman and some, and some nice news from Hans de Reuter. And then I'm going to give a, a slide presentation, followed by Stephen Soli, who will give an exec SG update. Uh, obviously, uh, parts of this session is, is purely Aeon technology, and other parts are, are not, and uh, we'll make that quite clear. Uh, so I want to start now with the, uh, the welcome and message from Matthew Lehman, who, of course, is the managing director of Aeon Technology. And uh, over to you, please, Bill. And over to you, please, Bill. Uh, hello, everyone from my desk in Oxford. Okay, Oxford. good. Instead of uh, working, I wish I could be there in person this year with you guys, but nothing beats meeting Amiga friends face to face. I hope you hope to join you in 2022 for more Amiga fun and camaraderie. Uh, regardless, I'm sure you'll have a great show. So I hear you ask, what's been happening in the recent months? Well, don't be concerned, the Amiga developer team has not been resting on our laurels. Um, if you recall, we released version 2 of the Enhancer software back in March. Uh, not content with that, we've been working on the next upgrade to the Enhancer software. Uh, version 2.1 is available to download free of charge to users this very weekend. It represents six months of work by our hard-working developers. Uh, download the latest version by using the updater utility. Um, I'm sure you're all very familiar with using updater after the frequent updates that we've been releasing over the last year or so. Of course, development hasn't stopped, and you'd probably be pleased to hear that. Brace yourselves for an exclusive news leak. Uh, we've had some great feedback from users, and we've listened. Uh, users wanted us to create a bootable distribution based on the Enhancer software components. In response, we've been working on the Enhancer software release V54, which is the sequel to V2. Uh, this will give you, you guys the option of creating a, a bootable system partition. It will contain all the en Enhancer software components that you know and love, Everything will be set up, ready to go. Let me take you through some of the key features of this new distribution. As I've mentioned, the new distribution created by the Enhancer software, release v54, creates a self-contained bootable partition, which is named as system v54. The heart of the new system v54 is the graphic system. It comprises of Warp 3D Nova, V54, Rajin HD, the Rajin RX graphics drivers, and the new video acceleration library. A favorite of many users is XDoc. It's populated with all the icons ready to go and greets you as soon as you boot system V54. Trevor? DB Player has yeah, been upgraded. It's still Matthew. You still can Matthew. now run this new version of okay. DB Player. Yeah, I hope they can't hear us. And it's I hope not. <laughs> Just putting it back on mute. Out of the okay. box. All your favorites are there too, such as TuneNet, MultiViewer, MultiEdit, Archiver, and the AMI PDF. System updates are handled once again by our trusty updater utility. A new exciting feature is NovaBridge. This lets you run the old Warp 3D games on a modern Nova-compatible graphics card. We've had to write a new DOS command set from scratch. This enables the system v54 to boot with its own native commands. We now have the freedom and flexibility to invest in further development of the new distribution and really push the next generation systems forward in a more complex software projects. There will be some great new advancements for the graphics system coming down the line. Having a self-contained system affords us the freedom to make complex changes and improvements to the system software. It means we don't have to interfere with OS4 system partitions or files. Compatibility is assured for you, the user, and it makes it a great experience. I'll now hand over to Hans, who will give more information about the fantastic new 
Nova Bridge software, which is contained in System 54. Hi guys, I trust that everyone at Emmy West is enjoying themselves. Unfortunately, I can't make it for reasons so obvious they're not worth mentioning, but I do have two things to tell you about. Actually, show you. Come have a look. So notice up here that this machine is using a Polaris graphics card. So we know that there are no Warp 3D drivers for Polaris 10, but let's start Wipeout, which is an old Warp 3D game. And it's running. I should be able to go all the way through and start a game. So what's happening here? Basically, this is all possible thanks to something called Nova Bridge, which is our Warp 3D driver that pipes it through to Warp 3D Nova. So it's a backward compatibility layer, basically. Uh, what does this mean? For end users, this means you don't need to know or care whether an app or a game uses Warp 3D, Warp 3D Nova, Mini GL, GL 4 ES, or anything else. So any confusion is gone. For developers, nobody needs to create a Warp 3D driver anymore. Once a Warp 3D Nova driver is available, it's all done, and everything will work. Oh, by the way, uh, for Wipeout, let's just stop this now. For Wipeout, you will also need Rewarp and Rewarp 3D uh, because it's an old Warp Us game. So let me just tell you how this came about. So end of last year, end of 2020, somebody was talking about how, yet again, about how confusing Warp 3D Nova, Warp 3D, and all the naming scheme is. And we realized that what it came down to is we still don't have a backward compatibility layer, which is something I'd hoped somebody else would write. Um, was it 3D came close, but it was never finished. And then at that point, I thought, you know what? I have the source code for the Southern Islands Warp 3D driver. Maybe I can strip it down, remove all the hardware dependent code, and use that to make the backward compatibility layer, to make Nova Bridge. So I did just that. I stripped it down, built a minimal proof of concept that I could send to Matthew and Trevor over at Aeon. And then from there, there's a whole lot of work to get all of the little draw modes and multi-texturing and everything else working. I uh, found a few surprises while working on it. Um, a lot of the old what 3 drivers have these per game environment variables that you can enable, enable, or disable to get around uh, old driver bugs or game bugs. Well, Nova Bridge doesn't have any. I did have to work around a few naughty demos poking straight into the what 3 d context instead of using the functions that are provided. But there's actually no, there's, there's no environment bent, uh, variables, there are no switches that need to be enabled or disabled on a per game basis. Um, especially Wipeout got a bit of a bad rap. There were multiple environment variables for that, saying, you know, it uses chroma testing, but it doesn't dis enable it. Well, it turns out, actually, it doesn't use chroma testing. It hasn't got anything the, the wrong way around. I don't know what happened when those things were put in. I think what ha what What's most likely is, even though Warp 3D is old and a lot simpler than 3D graphics now, it's still complicated enough that you can get confused and it can be very hard to figure out why is something misbehaving. So anyway, if you, maybe I'll show it again. If you look at Wipeout, you'll notice that the, the shadows are there and there's no workaround required to make it happen as, as with the previous driver. It's all just working. Bottom line is, uh, soon, as, as soon as, as Nova Bridge is released, backward compatibility for Warp 3D is coming to all supported Warp 3D Nova graphics cards. 
So that right now it's, it's, it's Polaris and Southern Islands that they're all they're all supported. And the naming confusion and seeming complexity of all the different three D graphics subsystems to a large large extent will go away because you don't need to know. You don't need to know, as I say, you don't need to know that uh, OpenJK, for example, is an old mini GL game, and that Spencer has walked through Unova. It'll all just work. Okay, so we're back. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, I hear you fine. And, and we can hear you, which is good, because jumping between different sources, so I want to make sure that's all right. Um, let me press this button. So it says Trevor Dickinson from Aeon. <laughs> so uh, that's on the screen there, and, and it should be what's uh, being broadcast out. Audio is good. Um, some nice uh, hat tips in the YouTube chat for the, um, for the uh, work, the Nova Bridge. Looking forward to playing with that a bit more. Um, so why don't you go ahead and, and launch into your presentation, Trevor? Okay, thank you. I'm just going to share my screen. Please do. Okay, can you see that okay? Yeah, we can see it fine. Great. Okay, uh, okay, no, great. Okay, well, uh, I hope you all saw my intro video uh, this morning when the show first started. <coughs> For obvious reasons, I'm in, in New Zealand. So uh, uh, I just want to reiterate, I'm pleased that, although I can't attend, that Aon is once again the gold sponsor for the show. And I'm pleased to see that uh, while other companies may come and go, it's good to see some of our regular sponsors like Amiga Kit, Amiga Forever, and individual computers stepping up once again to sponsor Amy West. So well done to you all. Um, as I've said, uh, I, I read frequent comments, and uh, now to make sure this works, I read frequent comments on, uh, on the forums that there's nothing happening. There's no development in the Amiga world, in Amiga OS 4. Uh, I'd just like to remind people that uh, uh, over the last eight months since uh, uh, Aeon released the Enhancer 2.0, uh, the developers, beta testers, and translators have been hard at work bringing out the new version. And I'm pleased to, uh, to announce that during this show, uh, after six months of, uh, since eight months, but six months of really intensive work, uh, uh, Enhancer Software 2.1 is available for release. It will be a free release for registered owners of Enhancer 2.0 and can be downloaded uh, using Updata, which you, if you've got Enhancer, you, all, you will know about. Uh, there are lots and lots of uh, changes in this release. Uh, there are too many to read to go over in this presentation, but they're on the screen so you can read them yourself. Um, I suppose the key changes are in the, the Radian drivers, the 3D drivers, and the video acceleration library. But there are so many changes uh, to programs, utilities, uh, that you know, it's, it would take the whole of this presentation plus another one probably to go through them all. So uh, I'm pleased to say that, you know, I think the, uh, the Aeon server is going to be hot this weekend with almost a thousand uh, enhancer customers already. Uh, I can see the uh, servers being uh, pretty overloaded. So if you're an enhancer customer, go and download your free 2.1 update. And if you're not an enhancer lo loader, uh, enhancer software owner, what are you waiting for? Go and get it. Uh, another new release, uh, which has been released this weekend, is the uh, DV player, uh, which uh, Aeon acquired from the developer Stephen Fellner in 2015. At last, a lot of work's been done on this to take advantage of all the new uh, enhancer features. So the video acceleration library, all of the, uh, <coughs> the extra um, uh, graphical uh, additions that we've uh, built into uh, Enhancer 2.1. And it's again, it's available to buy on Amistore. So you can buy it this week on Amistore, and users who buy DV Player will also be able to, to download a video acceleration driver for Radeon HT Southern Islands cards using the Aeon's updater tool. So that's the new one. Uh, Southern Islands will now support the uh, video acceleration library 
which means you can now have a really good video playback uh, with your son and uh, in Southern Isles cards. Uh, <clears throat> owners of the um, Polaris cards have had this uh, ability for a while, but now it, Southern Islands get that as well. There'll be a box version of DV Player available by the end of October from Amiga Kit. So if you if you like me and you like to collect the box sets, uh, I guess we're a bit old fashioned that way. Then you can you can get your you know, your DV Player in a, a nice little box set from the Amiga Kit. Yeah. So all the videos that we've played at NUS this year for the folks here on the screen were played with the new version of DV Player. It's fantastic. They're all 1080p. Um, the only one that had an issue was your video had a little stutter in the very, very beginning, but played fine after. Uh, really super quality. And uh, I even run my workbench at 24 by, what's the other one, like 24 by 14 or whatever it is. So, so the 2K resolution plays videos totally fine, even in 2K okay. resolution. It's fantastic. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's been designed for 4K resolution. Uh, but because of uh, a limitation, uh, which uh, Steve knows about, and maybe I'll talk about later, the limitation with the Amiga OS 4, um, uh, we can get about 380 by whatever that is. Uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be able to get 4K in the future. We're almost at 4K now. So anything other than that should, be, should play really well. So I'm pleased to hear you saying that, Bill. Thank you very much. Uh, another thing you heard uh, Matthew talk about in his short presentation was Enhancer Software version 54. Now, uh, I've seen some, uh, a number of comments about the Enhancer 54 and, <clears throat> and what the meaning of this is. Um, first of all, there are two installation methods. You can, enhance, you can install Enhancer 54 over your existing Amiga OS 4.1 system partition, just like you can with Enhancer. So there's no real difference on that basis. You can install it over the top. But we have a number of developers and you know, old Amiga users, like me, I suppose, uh, that prefer to keep this, their Amiga OS 4 system partition pristine with no third-party files. Uh, and uh, to accommodate that, it made sense to create a self-booting version 54 distribution. You still need your Amiga OS 4 uh, original disks uh, when you install it, because obviously you need certain files, but it means you can actually create a clean bootable partition with version 54 enhancer. And, and when you boot up, then you can choose either you want the traditional uh, Amiga OS 4 partition or the System 54. Um, either way, uh, it, System 54 will work very similar to the original enhancer. The good thing about it is that if you have your own boot partition, uh, it, will have, uh, it will be self-contained and will come with uh, XDoc fully set up, it'll come with all the uh, utilities fully set up, the applications that you know, Aeon have fully set up, and will support the new Warp uh, uh, 3D Nova, uh, Nova Bridge, it will all be built in as standard. Um, the, it will include Media Toolbox, which is obviously an Aeon product, uh, the new data types, uh, and video acceleration. So, the anticipated release date for this is 2022. Uh, we're on the ninth alpha version at the moment uh, with the beta testers. Uh, there's a couple of screenshots. The top one is just a screenshot with um, um, windows open. And the bottom one is a, a more recent screen screenshot with uh, DV player uh, playing a uh, 1080p video, I think. It's uh, the... Uh, it's Top Gun uh, trailer, and you can see the uh, Xbox icon set down below. Um, so, <clears throat> if you want to try uh, version 54 when it comes out, it's up to you. You can install it over top of OS 4 or your own, in, or your own uh, system partition, it's up to you. Another one that's been, been worked on, another uh, uh, classic program that was that Aeon acquired a long, long time ago. It's been sitting on the shelf, getting, gathering dust, but at last, we, there's been work being done on it. Uh, Kevin Schratt and Javier de, de la Ribas, and uh, Daniel will be doing some extra work on it next year. Uh, there's been work on that, so Optimed is being updated to OS4, clean and nice, and again, it'll be designed for both Enhancer and uh, version 54 Enhancer.
Now, you, I've had lots of information, lots of questions about uh, the A1222 plus, uh, what's happening. No one, there's no news about it. Well, I, I, I've come to realize that although we have a very, very uh, intense community that follows all the news, we have lots of different places where we put this news. It might be in Amiga Future magazine. It might be uh, uh, in an article I write. It might be on my soapbox articles. It might be on my, on my blog. Uh, so um, uh, so I, it does get a bit frustrating when I hear that, oh, nothing's happening. No one's telling us anything. I cannot follow every single community post and give information. I'm sorry, it's just not possible. So, um, as our Prime Minister in New Zealand said, the, the one source of truth is from me. I hate that word, actually. I think that's a terrible thing to say because there are lots of sources of truth and it's all about how you, how you analyze the information. But this is for your analysis. Uh, Aon partnered with Aon Cube, A Cube Systems in Italy. And AQ produced several prototypes of the A1222 Plus version 1.3. They've gone through the board pull-up process, which includes inspection, power and ground testing, CPLD and MCU programming, initial function testing, finally soap testing, and final operations. Steve Soli supplied the latest U-Boot firmware, thank goodness, and uh, the latest OS 4.1 ISO for the A1222 Plus was supplied by Hyperion Entertainment. So far, so good. It's been a really good combined, coordinated effort. Uh, Max, Max uh, uh, Tretine, or Tretine, I, can't, I don't know how to pronounce Max's surname, uh, of A Cube Systems is now progressing to installation of OS4. Uh, the latest photo, and there's a nice photo of the board sent to me by Enrico. I put this on one of my, end of one of my blogs and I got nothing but abuse for putting it on. And I thought, that's very strange. Why would someone abuse me for showing something that's, that's obviously quite exciting, really? Uh, but I think it's because I just put it there, didn't, didn't say anything about it. I just, I thought Amigans were more, you know, imaginative and understand what that, that was about. But never mind, it's there. And there's the back of the board. And we retained the little uh, Easter eggs that Varus has put on the board. I can only find three, but I'm told there are five. So if you can find the other uh, missing two, please let me know. Um, I got this in two days ago, uh, showing that OS4 was booting to the Amiga OS 4.1 splash screen, uh, but uh, the, obviously the uh, hard disks weren't recognized, and there you are, you see insert disk icon. So I thought, here we go again, another show, turn up, and everyone will say, it's fake, it's fake news, it's false. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave the exec SG update to Stephen. Stephen's been working very hard with his, his team of, of volunteers he's brought together, uh, plus some paid developers. And uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's been mainly good news, but I'll let Steve update on that. Uh, obviously, exec SG is not a Neon project. Uh, that's one that I'm personally involved in. Uh, and Stephen has you know, kindly taken the lead on that. Um, if you're a... If you've been following uh, the From Vultures to Vampires book, uh, volume one is out in, out in the wild. Um, David shipped all of the Kickstarter backers copies to the far reaches of the world. So places like Australia, New Zealand, and uh, uh, furthest away from the UK got theirs first, uh, whereas people in the UK probably got theirs last. So I still haven't got one, so I haven't a clue what it looks like. Uh, mine disappeared in the post in Australia. Uh, and as I think I said in my blog, I think uh, the the distribution center in Australia, the guy was an Amiga and he wanted to really read that book. But then I thought, well, maybe he'd run out of toilet paper. I don't know. Who knows? Right. Anyway, but uh, volume two has been written now. I'm over 50% through it. Uh, just in case you're wondering, I'm not earning a penny from this. Uh, I'm not from the Kickstarter back, backing or from the various booksellers. It is available if you didn't back the Kickstarter, it's available from booksellers all, all around the world. Uh, and all, all proceeds will go back to David Pleasance and, and help to um, create more books. Um, I hope you saw my little video this morning and my tribute to, to Goody. Uh, is Goody at the show? You can tell me afterwards. Um, I uh, I, oh, no, no. I was wandering around last night trying to find a beer.
<laughs> well, for anyone who hasn't been to Army West, one of the, the treats at Army West is uh, Robert, is it Goodliff? Uh, turns up to the show with with real ales, you know, uh, flagons of real ales. He calls them gravelers. And uh, they usually last most of the show for people that drink. And you, there's always a really dark one and some pale ales and, you know, a really good mix. And if you're very lucky, you might get a glass of port from him. But he's not here this year, so I'm not missing out. So, uh, so that's all I want to say this year. Oh, uh, I do have one more picture, which I got at 10 o'clock, actually 11.45 p.m., 46 p.m. last night when I was in bed uh, from Enrico Badali in Italy to tell me that there is a 12 to a 22 plus running Amiga OS 4.1, and there's the workbench screen. So that's the first time I've seen that. It's hot off the press. I'm excited about it. I shouted in bed last night, whoa! Why said, wrong? Are you, are, you, are you unwell? And I said, no, no, no. This has been a long, long, long journey, and I'm, fine. I'm pleased we're finally getting to the end of it. So anyway, it's alive. And with that note, I would like to hand over. Uh, um, we can either do questions now or we can hand over to Steve, and then we do questions after Steve's presentation. We've lost just. Sorry, I just uh, was messing with the audio levels. Just had to jack up the in room here. Um, let's see, any questions? Uh, there, there's a question about the AAA packs um, in the YouTube chat. I don't know if you're prepared to talk about that. Uh, I can I can uh, only give the information that I've got that that if. All the AAA packs have been sent out. If you haven't got your AAA pack, you need to contact Amiga Kit. Okay. Um, mm. Someone is saying they've been reaching out and they haven't gotten uh, any details, uh, haven't gotten a response. Uh, okay. If, if you don't get a response from Amiga Kit, then send me an email and I'll follow it up. Okay. Um, mm. Why V54 and not something else? Uh uh, you'll have to ask Matthew Lehman for that. Matthew is obviously the uh, looks after all the Aeon software development, and uh, I suppose uh, it's not the most off your tongue title, is it? You know, but but anyway, uh, <laughs> um, it's Enhancer, so it's Enhancer V54 rather than Enhancer 2.1. I mean, it does make sense as it becomes more system that it uses system naming. So that makes sense to me. Mm, okay. Um, I think that's the end of the Aeon uh, questions. Okay, any from the room here? Any Aeon questions for Trevor? Because because we have a different Trevor coming up next. We've got the Exec SG Trevor. So when the, the Aeon <laughs> Trevor leaves, he might not come back. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not seeing any other questions, so uh, why don't we switch topics and talk OS4 and uh, popcorn kernels? All right. I've unmuted myself. I, and I've muted myself. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. One last question that people are asking, and I, I, I hey. forgot. Um, this is the, the hardest question, and two weeks is not the right answer. When do you think the Tabor is going to be for sale? Oh, right. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, well, um, I, I expect someone to answer that, uh, ask that question, because obviously we've been waiting for it. Um, now we're, we're, we're A-Cube got uh, OS4 booting to Workbench. They'll obviously make sure there's no hardware surprises and everything works fine. And then the next thing is to decide who produces the, uh, the, um, the early adopter manufacturer run. Uh, I've got my own thoughts about that. I will be talking with Matthew and, and Enrico Badali of Acube, and then once we've decided the, the next stage, we'll, we'll, we will actually announce it. There won't be any secret. It'll be announced, and, uh, and then we'll push on from there. But I'm, I'm put this way, I'm really excited. <laughs> uh, 
it's taken a long time to get to this stage and um, uh, I'm looking forward to actually getting these boards out to a wider audience. I mean, there are about 50 boards out in the field anyway uh, with uh, beta testers. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I probably use my A1222 as much as my X5040. I have them both switched on most of the time. And I think I said in a recent blog, I have my uh, A1222 connected to my PC through a meager explorer of all things, which you know, it's, it seems a bit strange, but it's a really easy way of transferring files between uh, a PC and, a, and, uh, and my A1222 on my home network. Okay, very yep. cool. Is that, is that a good enough answer? Oh, it sucks. I want to now. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess the, <laughs> if I had a pile of cash and waved it in front of you, you couldn't take it till it's ready, so we'll have to wait. Well, well we've got to decide how, how we go about this. I mean, do we... I mean, I'm all, I know Matthew has always been one for we don't take people's money because that's not a good idea. Um, there's been too many disappointments in the past in the, in the Amiga space. Uh, but we have uh, 100 plus early adopters who signed up, who, who bought the pack so they could get uh, uh, an Amiga, uh, an A1222 early adopter board. So we'll go to them first. And of course, time, time passes. So, you know, some might not want to pick up a board now, some might. So I'm sure there'll be a few boards spare left over. Then we'll decide how we progress from there after the early adopt. Yeah, put okay. on the list for one of those leftovers. Because <laughs> I don't have enough of them. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's jump over to the uh, exec SG update from uh, our man Steve. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, I'm going to do the share your screen thing as well. Just give me a moment here. We were joking no. about it earlier while you're doing that, Steve. His background is completely virtual. He, he took a picture <laughs> of his office and then he hung those uh, <laughs> coin balls. Uh, it's just a JPEG background. I, I love no, it. those are real. <laughs> <laughs> They're real. <laughs> okay, where is the present? He couldn't come to any West this year. He, he needed to get his boing on, so he probably did that treatment to his, uh, his office. Yes. <laughs> I had to do something. Uh, hmm. Where is the present button? Ah. The big green one in the middle. Oh, no. Uh, maybe you have, oh, there it is. Found it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm new to this. There you go. So that should be my screen. We can't see it yet. It'll come. Yeah. Okay, we got it. You're good. Good. All right. Of course, I can't uh, tell if you can see it yet because of the delay. Oh, we're but, good. Uh, yeah, okay. Go. All right. So here we are once again. <laughs> so uh, I just have a quick summary of what is ExecSG because some people might not remember. It's uh, basically our kernel plus a bunch of support utilities and extra bits and bobs. Uh, it, it was, it's based on the original 68K exec by Carl Sassenrath and uh, Thomas and Hans Jorg created a brand new implementation for PowerPC. So that's what it is. And we, we have a fairly extensive team of uh, volunteers slash contractors helping out, as you can see here. So uh, it, it, the team has grown over, over time and uh, they're doing well, I think. Uh, current status is uh, we had, okay, so since last year, right? So last year we had uh, multi-car working. It was, it was functional. And I said, yay, it works. And then now it's like, what? It doesn't work. <laughs> well, it, it, it was faulty, uh, to, to put it bluntly. That's what Thomas, that's Thomas's word. He said it was faulty. So he had to re-implement it. And um, so that took a lot of time. Uh, but along the way, we also added some more goodies, like the uh, exec command and control client, which is kind of cool. Um, it, right now, there's this kdebug command to use. Uh, I think we're going to move away from that and just use ECC client from now on. Uh, there's a core stat command, which is kind of cool. shows you the status of all the cores that are running. Uh, there's a new function that was needed to get our software back in line because uh, as you can probably guess, there's some 
utilities or pieces of the OS that poke directly into exec, those naughty, naughty boys. So we had to get in there and replace those pieces with a new function call so that they stopped doing that. And they're functioning. Uh, I think Workbench was in there and uh, I think Intuition was poking in there, little bits. Uh, we also did the preloader experiment, we being Tony Wyatt. Thank you, Tony. Shout out to Tony, because it's not really we, it's more Tony did everything. He, he implemented the preloader. If you recall, uh, we thought that the preloader would speed up our boots um, by pre-linking all of the system modules together. And it turned out it didn't really do much of anything. Uh, <laughs> so unfortunately or fortunately, how you, depends how you look at it, our technology has moved on. So the new chips are so fast that the preloader really doesn't matter. Uh, it would have mattered back in the XE days, if you remember the XE, but uh, oh well. <laughs> so we're not going to probably go ahead with the preloader uh, since it didn't give us much of a boost. Um, we also updated the SDK, of course, and it's, uh, it's ready to go. Um, also had to help out with the, like Trevor mentioned, the E1222 plus U-boot. I don't know if you use the plus sign or the word plus. Looks like you'd like the word plus. So that's my boo-boo. <laughs> I never know marketing what they're up to. Um, bug fixes, of course, we found uh, some pretty nasty bugs while um, fixing up the multi-core and re-implementing things. So there was actually a bug in add task, which is way back in 4.0. <laughs> so it, luckily it didn't do much, uh, except in failure scenarios. So it'll definitely help out when you're running out of memory. Uh, debug interrupts are fixed, uh, something fixed on X5000, which was quite nasty. So I'm glad we got that. Um, also we have distinctive kernel versions. So if you're wondering if you have a multi-core kernel, you just go version kernel and it'll tell you. So no, you don't because I didn't release it to anybody. But when the time comes, yeah, that's how you can tell whether you're a single or multi-core kernel. Uh, of course, miscellaneous things have been fixed and what have you. So that's, uh, that's what's happened. Um, our roadmap really hasn't changed much. Uh, I'm still fo I'm focusing everybody on the X5000. I said, get that working. Like get more than one core working on there. Then we'll worry about the A1222 and the X1000, because those are the machines that have multiple cores. Um, we also have to still improve that load time SPE support. It, um, there's a couple of strange floating point problems, like uh, with infinity or zero or something like that, that we have to fix those up. Nothing gigantic, but it, they, they need fixing. Um, 4K displays, I think Trevor mentioned that. Yeah, our VRAM bar, if anyone knows what a bar is, uh, is basically address space. And we need more address space uh, to get the 4K displays working correctly, or at all, because uh, they need quite a bit of address space to get out there. And so the idea is that we're going to have to change probably U-boot, maybe the kernel, to get the 4K displays working. I'm not 100% sure which way we're going to go. Usually we go to U-boot first and try to try to display, uh, increase the bar sizes there first. But anyway, we're going to we're going to go through that. Um, we still need 64-bit addressing support. Um, that's going to be even more critical as Hans de Ruder keeps forcing us to use larger and larger address spaces. And um, the machines, they like to work with 64-bit addresses, right? Uh, so we really got to add some more support for that in there because the 32-bit APIs don't cut it. And uh, they, need to, they need to be expanded for that, that new hardware. And a uh, better logging system, of course, is, is a big one. Um, actually, Thomas recently added uh, timestamps, which is something we actually didn't have, surprisingly. So in our debug output, you, you really need those when you're doing uh, multi-core. And then there's uh, what's going on with multi-core. I have a whole slide for that. Uh, so public demo, I was going to have one for the show, but it didn't work. Still searching for the problem. <laughs> so basically, I'm going to put the promise out there as soon as possible. So we're not going to hide it. As soon as it works, we're going to uh, 
I don't know, take a video, put it on YouTube or something, right? And then you can see there's some small print there. I'm not going to say what that says. And uh, <laughs> there's um, what has been implemented since last year as well. We, he did actually quite a bit of work. Uh, disable free interrupt handling, was, which is working. Uh, lockout mechanism, spin locks are in there. Forbid permit working. So if you know anything about Amiga OS, uh, forbid permit and disable enable are the killers for multi-core, right? That's uh, something that was not designed for multiple cores. <laughs> so we've had to find workarounds for it. And uh, it's amazing the kind of strange problems you find. Uh, what was that last one that Thomas found? There's a program that does a forbid and then, then does a wait on signals. And I'm like, what? That's not proper He's like, well like, apparently somebody thought it was so there's all sorts of little corner cases like that that pop up uh what else did we find recently oh uh rex rex had a bug in it it was poking into exec base naughty naughty rex <laughs> you just never know what you're gonna find when you try to um try to do multiple cores i'll tell you <laughs> so right now uh we're hunting an elusive spin lock problem uh, that's I'm helping out Thomas with that one a uh, little bit, well, as much as I can. Um, learning a lot of PowerPC assembly, lots of, lots of interesting things there. Um, there's always timing issues. Uh, when you have more than one core going, you're always going to get a timing issue, right, between task A, task B, uh, because our systems basically have been, uh, had the luxury of everything being sequential. Well, that's gone now, so. We're gonna see how that works out. And of course the multi-core load balancer is right next on the list. As soon, as soon as you have one core working properly, you have to start balancing between more than one core. So that's why we need the load balancer. Uh, we're not quite sure if the load balancer is gonna be automatic or manual. Like does the developer choose or does the OS choose? So we might have to uh, find some way to do both. So that's, uh, that's where our multi-core is at the moment. Uh, we also have other projects going on. There's an LLVM implementation that's been happening since spring 2021. Um, this is something uh, uh, one of our members, Doug, is working on. And uh, he's hit a, hit a little bit of a wall at the moment. He he's, has to get shared library support working on, uh, on LLVM. So he's got the LLVM actually running. Uh, you did a hello world, and it says hello world, right? <laughs> Which is really awesome. Um, it, it's uh, anybody who knows what LLVM is, they'll they'll be excited. Uh, if you want to help out with his efforts to get uh, Clang and shared libraries and all that working, he has a GitHub uh, where all the source code is hiding, not hiding. It's public, um, pub open source, all that good stuff. So I put the link at the bottom there. And so if you're interested in uh, seeing LLVM work uh, even better on Amigo S4, or just please help out. It'd be cool. And he's made quite a bit of progress uh, considering how difficult a, a project it can be. Um, also, uh, I did a little bit of work um, on some open source SDK tools. Uh, one of the big problems I found out when building the SDK was that cross-compiling is uh, very, very difficult. So like if I want to build the SDK on Linux, I couldn't. So I went, well, that, that's no good. What if I want to? So I, I went and made my own command replacements because that's the in thing these days. So I made my own version command because you can't have too many. You just can't. Uh, Autodoc, I made an Autodoc. <laughs> <laughs> an IDL tool and a bump rev. So now I can build exec SG on pretty much any machine I want in the world. I can even go to the Amazon cloud and build it. Uh, it just goes. So like, if you want to throw hardware at this thing, you can build all of exec in like two seconds. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> or you could put it on your X5000 and it takes 20, 30 seconds or whatever it is. So there you go. So if you want to help me out with uh, my open source Python tools, they're all in Python 2.5 and up. Uh, the reason, 
by the way, I picked Python 2.5 is because that's the version on Amigo S4 right now. So I had to pick the, the minimum, which is 2.5. <laughs> Hopefully they'll get it updated to whatever the latest 2 is, 2.9, I don't know. And even better, 3. But when that time comes, until then, I will stick with 2.5, which is, this is fine for these, for these little tools. And yeah, if you want to help out, there's my GitHub address at the bottom. Let me know. All that good stuff. Um, Oh, questions, yes, questions, concerns, criticisms. Uh, I thought, Bill, uh, we could wait till the very, very end, or God, I got one more slide. <laughs> says, if you want to help out, please email me. <laughs> There's my, uh, my help wanted sign. Guaranteed 100% lawsuit free, that's my motto. <laughs> So far? Oh, yes, 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 exactly, exactly. So is, uh, is this your last slide? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll stop sharing now, if you don't mind. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Uh, question from the YouTube channel. The uh, LLVM, uh, is that necessary for versions of WebKit, question mark? Uh, larger questions, what is the reason implementation the reason because it's there no um you know guys guys like to if the if you're going to volunteer i'm not going to stop you basically so doug wanted to do llvm he wants to have access to those latest tools the clang right the latest c plus plus and uh whatever else you can run on llvm right because uh, you can run all sorts of languages uh whatever you can dream up so uh, I said, okay, well, let's try it. And uh, he really was keen on getting the debugger going too. So that, that, that's what I like. If we can get a nice low-level debugger on another, um, another framework, I'll take it. So, yep. Um, so, so basically, Steve, they're developer tools, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's definitely developer stuff. Yeah, not user stuff, but... Looking at the YouTube channel, um, you know, every year the question comes up around retargeting to a different CPU. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to make any comments about that, but it was uh, in the YouTube channel, you know, why not Intel? <laughs> well, I, I, I do believe we got to get the 1222 out the door first. So, uh, <laughs> you know, once that's out... <laughs> Other projects can come along, so I, I can't really comment on the uh, on the internals of that. It's more of a well, it's, it's not really Aeon, Acube, whoever has hardware capabilities to answer, right? If they if they, if they build it, though, we'll, we'll throw a kernel on it. You just <laughs> you bet. <laughs> you, uh, you talked about the status of, of multi-core uh, and, and it being faulty. Code. The implementation um, we did last year, yeah. Yeah, is there, um, is there any more to unpack there in terms of like, because I, I think at this point the folks running OS 4 are interested in the sausage making and, you know, some of the design decisions go in there. Like, was there like an overriding reason why there was a pivot there and a rewrite that you could discuss? Yeah, yeah well, uh, basically, the details are, are too detailed, but basically we hit a wall, right? You go so far, you you try your thing, you try your technique, your design, and then you hit the. I think what happened this time was disable enable got us. Uh, it just couldn't work with the previous design, so he had to pivot and try another way. Uh, this is, I don't know if you know, but uh, this is try number three, I believe. We tried the first time with the X kernel, that didn't work. The second time was much, much better, and this is the third strike. So we're, we're hoping the third one works. We're going to hit a home run with this one. <laughs> uh, it, it turns out that what gets you is the strange corner cases. That's what really gets you. So uh, we're trying to find a way to implement it without breaking 100% of stuff, right? That's the, that's the tricky part. YouTube. First was kind of for Steve, second was probably more for Trevor. 
So the first question here is, uh, is MIG OS 4 built on build server automatically? Have you modernized that kind of build pipeline at all? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not on a build server other than me hitting enter. So. It, can, it can be on a build server. <laughs> no problem now. Uh, thanks to the, uh, well, what, what I'm, I've moved, I've moved us to Docker and I've moved us to um, Python so that everything is um, platform agnostic to a per certain point, right? And it still builds on the original Amiga too, so still does. Four thousand that you build OS four on? Yep. Actually, I use a SAM four sixty. No, sixty eight K over here. Sixty eight K. Oh no, no. <laughs> so the the next question is for Trevor. Um, the the A twelve twenty two. I keep wanting to call it a by the way. But the A twelve twenty two uh, can be seen as an entry level Amiga model for anyone who has yet to experience Amiga OS four on X. How do you hope it will change and evolve the community? Thank you, Peter, for that. <coughs> okay. Well, when we first started this a long time ago, uh, I think it was two thousand and fourteen. Uh, we the plan was to build, a fa you know, the biggest problem with small volume manufacturing is one, getting people want to do it, and two, the cost. So even a thousand small volume manufacturing, but in the MEGA, in the next generation of MEGA world, a thousand is quite a lot. Uh, and so we committed to a thousand, uh, a development program with our partners, hardware partners at the time, uh, um, Varisys, who became Ultra Varisys, and uh, committing to about I'm trying, over 300,000 pounds at the time was about $500,000 uh, commitment. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, uh, at the same time we had uh, the X5000 going through its, its, its uh, in, inaugural development. Uh, and uh, note to future, don't put two developments through at the same time because the uh, developers couldn't handle it. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, uh, this is a long answer to a sh short question. Um, eventually, um, the effectively the A1222 got parked. Well, we focused on the uh, the X5000 because the, we had committed to X5000s as well, and they were being built and shipped by Varus to to Aeon. So we were getting in in batches, probably 50 a month, and we had 500 of those coming in at almost a thousand pounds each. So you see this thing building up the cost, uh, and we didn't have an operating system to run with. So for about two or three years, all we had was money going out and nothing coming in. And the plan to bring out the the mid-range but low-cost A1222 um, <clears throat> didn't work because we couldn't even bring out the X5000 for, for well-noted reasons. Uh, and you want to look back through the history, it's, it's all there. Um, so eventually, the X5000 did come out, and uh, it's working very nicely. We got the, X, X, the uh, uh, X5040, Amiga 1 X5040. Um, by the way, I used the word Amiga 1 X5040, because that's what it is. I say X5000 because it's easier and shorter. So there's no reason for any other reason for saying that. Uh, so the A1222 was supposed to be the mid-range performance level, but entry level, lower cost model. And, and best laid plans, uh, lots of reasons it didn't happen. Now we're bringing out the X5, the, the um, early adopter mod model. We've kept the cost really low. It's lower than most other products out there. It's lower, it's less expensive than a vampire. It outperforms a vampire, but by a mar order of magnitude, but it's less expensive than a vampire. Um, and, uh, but there are different markets. The you know, vampire is a kind of faster classic market, and uh, the A1222 Plus is for Amiga OS 4. We wanted Amiga OS 4 users. Now, the question is, uh, once we do the early adopter run, will that spawn a whole new growth in uh, a a OS4 customers, or will the same OS4 people, like myself and Steve and others, 
just be the ones that buy another machine. So we have another OS4 machine sitting on our desk. What we really want is new OS4 users, because uh, that's the only way to um, make it more relevant for hardware developers, for software developers to sell their products. And when I say that, you know, we've been running Enhanced Now for, I don't know, four years, three, four years, it, we've just got up to about 1,000 customers now. Uh, so it shows you that the market is not massive. We need to increase that market tenfold to make it more interesting for developers and more interesting for hardware manufacturers and third-party manufacturers. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's, for me, it's, you know, I've said it before, I'm a crazy Amiga and it's my hobby and passion, uh, but it also needs to be a business for other people. So I'm, 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 this will be a great test to see whether we can actually get the uh, A1222 out into as many hands as possible. And that's why I want to keep the price low. And the, uh, and the, but obviously it's got to be going to make commercial sense so that we can cover our costs. Uh, and I know Matthew would like to make a little bit of money. Uh, so uh, that's my long-winded answer to a very simple question. I hope that helps. Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is, to, to summarize, right, uh, how do you get more OS4 users, right? And yeah. your point about those of us who have them collecting more doesn't really help us grow. So that's uh, for Chin. I guess one thing you mentioned, before I get to the next question here, is, uh, you mentioned the X5040. Is, is that something people can buy? Is the X5020 still for sale? Just out of curiosity. Uh, we have X5020s and 40s. Um, uh, they are for sale. Uh, the 40s um, officially, uh, there's not an, there is a beta version of the OS4 for the 40. I mean, I run my 40 every day, uh, but uh, there's not, there's not, so my, my watch keeps ringing. Sorry, it's someone in the States trying to contact me. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we need to have a final uh, OS4 ISO for the 40. Uh, the, the, I suppose the other alternative, and I need to speak to Matthew about this, we could sell the 40 uh, and just supply the, the beta ISO. We'd have to obviously speak with Hyperion about that because obviously they like to, their ISOs to go out and be working. But the, uh, uh, the um, X five thousand forties ISO is you know, for me it's it's good enough. Okay. Yeah, I mean I'm just on uh, Amiga Kit page and they don't even list any OS four systems for sale. Um, um, Amiga Kit might not do, but uh, if you go on to AAA Technology in uh, Luxembourg, they do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, getting back to the the YouTube questions here. Um, uh, you know, hard to collect the A22 news in one place. You mentioned that. Uh, th there's a website that hasn't been updated. Um, you know, I, I think part of it is a communication piece. Do you have any thoughts on you know, what we might see, some uh, some updates to the website or whatever? Uh, uh, it's easy to blame someone else. So I won't blame someone else. I blame myself. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, if we, if you put some sort of formal website there, you can, ex you should expect to be updating that. So, put that, put that down to me. Uh, but I do make sure that updates come out on my blog, and uh, they also come out through Amiga Future magazine. And as I wrote recently in the Amiga Future magazine, sometimes I get criticised for not putting news out uh, through uh, more immediate channels for the ten-second soundbite. Uh, but I like to support the Mega Future as well as the longest running uh, Mega mass produced, you know, in small volumes, a Mega magazine in the world. Uh, so I, I do reserve some news for a, a Mega Future because I've just written an article for Mega Future. It won't be out for Christmas. Uh, and so some of the news that comes out, uh, you know, by the time you get it in a magazine, it's so out of date. So. In our, in our instant world of the internet and, and, the, and the web, we expect news now. We don't, expect, we don't analyze the news. We take it in and discard it and want the next news. We become really, you know, really quite bad at absorbing information, sitting on it, deliberating on it, and deciding what, the, what it really means. That's just my own personal pet peeve. We, we become news, you know, we become info junkies. 
rather than being thoughtful about what we read and look at and discuss. But that's, I'm an old fogey, I apologize. So, getting back to the YouTube questions, is, is there a big difference between the 520 and the 540 uh, motherboards? Uh, uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head, there's not a big difference. There are, uh, Steve can tell you some technical differences that, that, that he has to allow for, but uh, it's faster. Uh, from, my, from a use perspective, and I'm a user, it's faster. And of course, if you're an Amiga, you always want it to be faster. That was always the... Steve, do you want to make a comment about any of the technical differences? <laughs> well, th there, there's a sprinkle throughout the kernel, really. Uh, there's not many, but like you said, the clock speed, it's faster. And it's got more cores, which I'd love to use. So <laughs> those are the two big things. Uh, really, it's just, I don't know how much fast you would call it, like a lot or? <laughs> well, I mean, it, you can do some tests, you know, but, you know, I've, yeah, never, watched yeah. I've never been much of As a user. Be benchmark tests because they're yeah. usually there to prove a point rather than what's it like to use. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. yes, bigger so, numbers. Yeah. But, it, but if, you do the, if you want bigger numbers, it gives you bigger numbers. Yes, it does. Compared to the yes. 50, 20, yeah. There's not a lot of difference. I mean, mm. there, we have an if else here and there. That's it's, it's not bad. <laughs> Once multicore is working, Steve, no, no challenge. Once multicore is working, then you'll probably see some differences. Oh yes, yes, quite a bit. Um, there's a question for Steve. Um, actually, you know, these questions are more OS4 questions uh, versus kernel around. Well, number of questions kernel. So the one question is multi-user support. I think that's above the kernel. And then uh, memory protection would be a, a kernel issue. Uh, do you want to comment on that? Uh, which one? Multi-user? Well, both. You can. I mean, I, I've been involved in the multi-user discussion. So. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's actually a necessity. Because um, porting even a web browser, it expects multi-user. And to force it into single user, hurts. So <laughs> uh, we, we've had several discussions uh, about multi-user support, but it never seems to make it to the highest point of the list of things to do. But it definitely keeps going up higher each e passing year. Uh, that's all I can really say about it. Uh, uh, it's not implemented yet, obviously. Uh, memory protection is, um, I think that question pretty much means uh, uh, it shouldn't crash so often. <laughs> I don't think anyone really cares about memory protection. Really, as a user, you don't give you don't give a who. Um, as long as it doesn't crash, right? <laughs> so, that, yes. Be the key. Yeah, that's the key. So, uh, it's impossible on Amigo OS to have memory protection fully implemented. It's just uh, you can't do it. But you can go to a certain point, and we've been pushing the limits um, here and there um, to try and get that more and more protection in. Um, after, I, I'd like to see multi-core working first and then we can go to the isolated address spaces which is something i've really been keen to try where each task can see two gigabytes of ram that that requires memory protection uh, to work properly so that's going to be interesting <laughs> so that if a task crashes it doesn't affect anybody else basically as long as they're not talking to the as long as, long as they're not talking to each other so uh, that's probably as far as we can go in Amigo S is, uh, is isolated address spaces. Um, then you'd, you'd have to start over with something new, I'm afraid. So hopefully that answers the question. There's a issue just close. There's a follow-on question. Uh, if you can see it, can hear me. There's a... You're faint. Yeah, you're faint. Like, okay. Really, really. I'm, I'm messing with the, the volumes here because I got to oh, yeah. anyway, it seems like uh, it makes sense to uh, Okay, um, there's a follow-on question around zombie tasks and resource tracking, and, and I'll echo that as an OS4 user, and I think it kind of answers that, but it seems yep. to me that memory protection and what you described is a, a piece of that around if an application behaves naughty or uh, a software bug, to limit the blast radius, as they would kind of term it in Docker, right? Uh, yep. Blast radius of the problem. Is that all wrapped up in that same implementation, or is there yeah. something new there? Is that something that yep. one of those things, like, I, I, I imagine if you have a snake, 
that this is just like a hedgehog. And, and, and that hedgehog is multicolored. And, you know, snake really can't eat anything else, so nothing's going to move through it until that's done. <laughs> is that kind yeah, of like that? that's basically where we're at, because everything else depends on that implementation. Because uh, if we start adding features now, before multicore is finished, it's going to, they're going to conflict, right? So th that's that's where we're kind of stuck. But um, yeah, but we, we've been adding tons of resource tracking to uh, Amigo S in general uh, over the years. Uh, it tracks a lot more than it used to. Uh, there's the concept of suspended tasks, which is really cool. So it, you can't really, it's like a zombie, right? It's still there. It's, it's stopped in, in time. It can't move. Uh, that's that's uh, as far as we could go without hurting things, basically. Because <laughs> if you remove the task, like in, in Linux or some other uh, OS like it, then it can clean up. But in Amiga OS, you can't really clean up easily because of the, the heritage, the API. It uh, doesn't render itself for that. So, But we can suspend it and then keep going, which is almost there. So it's it's been it's been a long journey. What can I say? <laughs> it depends how much you want to break backwards compatibility, right? Steve, really does that does. mean if a task was suspended, it mm -hmm. would that any resource space allocated to it would still be there? Yeah. Until the to use okay. Yeah, yeah. It still holds the memory, but then if you know it owns that memory, well, you can free it as long as no one else is sharing with it. So there's certain things you can do. Okay. Yeah, or file handles that kind of stuff. Um, so the next question, and, and I think we're going to wrap up here real quickly because we got to clear the room for the banquet. Um, so, uh, Mitch, uh, okay, I have a question for both of you guys. Have you bought raffle tickets yet? Yes, I've got mine. <laughs> Trevor? I didn't uh, buy a ticket for me on Peggy Laser. Oh, no. You gotta send them the link. Send them. I'll send you the link. Okay. Send me the link. Yeah. I mean, a, a wonderful financial sp uh, supporter of the show, for sure. Uh, and buy we'll, as many as you can. Yeah. So we'll we'll uh, we'll move it to there. Um, so so this one is for Trevor because we like asking questions that make you happy and comfortable. What's the status of the image effects power PC? Uh, okay. Yeah. Good one. Um. It. Uh. I, I was going to talk about it at this. At this, I was, I was going to talk about two things. One was LibreOffice. One was the image effects. Uh, LibreOffice. We were going to have a demo uh, for the show, uh, a video demo, but uh, a little hardware mishap about two days before the show meant that uh, uh, the developer couldn't couldn't uh, produce the demo. So that was really uh, disappointing. Image effects. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, uh, our one of our great developers, Andy Broad, has been working on uh, ImageFX to bring it up to OS4 type um, look, look. And so uh, I, I, I should have mentioned ImageFX, but I'd also expect that to be out in 2022. Um, uh, and I, I, what I'll do is I'll find out what the time the timetable is that, and I'll probably put it in my uh, my next blog or or on uh, on my soap in a soapbox article for Amiga Future. Yeah. So Andy has kept block fame. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm sure for Andy it will be a labor of love. So. Yeah, well, well Andy's a great developer. He's really good at OS. Yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely fantastic. In fact, in just general, we are blessed with so many good developers, to be honest, throughout the big world, whether it's OS4 or more you know, or, or for us. Come on, guys. Put it down. We've really got some really good work. Uh, and the more we can get them working together the better. It's just my, my dream. Cool. No, that's definitely good. So you mentioned Libre. Uh, hopefully we'll get some movement there. Uh, uh, the last question is, uh, you kind of answered this, but the take it point is, uh, what money would it need to finish AOS, the Amigo S4 milestone 
in the next 12 months? Is this, is this a money problem? Is it a skills issue? Like, I mean, obviously, if we could have it now, we all want it now. And, and we know you guys are working really hard, but how can the community help more to, to kind of re-energize or get, get these critical things moving so that we can, you know, get past this, like, we're waiting for it to happen. It's been a long time, and the fatigue is setting in. So, you know, it's been promised and not delivered, frankly. So just curious if you have any thoughts on that. And then on that uh, wonderful, happy note, we'll close it out. Unfortunately, Bill, we only got about half of that because you kept breaking up. I don't know about you, Steve. Yeah, it was a little, so, little choppy. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay, it's, it's the, I'm hanging the microphone off my mask. It's one of these uh, lapel things. Anyway, you should, you should, so the, the last question is, is, is we talk about time and money and people to get past this milestone multi so that we can all move on, because we're kind of bang, backed up on this. Uh, what can the community do? Like, for, what would it take to help you guys finish this in the next 12 months so that we can kind of move forward and start getting to some of these other features? 4K, less interesting, you know, better memory protection, resource management, a crash gas, much more interesting. Like, how do we get there? What can we do to help? You know, where, where is that problem? Steve, I'll let you, you're, you're muted, Steve, so I'll let you answer the answer. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, um, uh, I, I, we are looking for volunteers. If you're familiar with PowerPC and you want to help uh, with the really low-level stuff, uh, please step forward. Uh, we're talking low-level, though, for assembly language kind of thing. Um, you know, understanding PCI buses, understanding all that, memory windows, bars, all that good stuff. Uh, if, if you're familiar with that, uh, please do contact me because um, we're always looking for fresh eyes on that and uh, and possibly some testing. But um, that's that's uh, that's all 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 we need at the moment. Uh, uh, money won't help there. We need talent, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can always find money, but we need talent. That's what we need uh, to to help uh, help find these strange spin lock bugs and such. Okay. And we, we, we really have um, added many beta testers to our exec SG team because as Steve says, we actually want, uh, beta testers are great and you need them, but in our team we need people that actually have the, the skills to do the low level stuff that Steve's talking about. Yeah, yeah, so they're really. I'm, I'm gonna leave it on a, a more positive note. Peter was asked a bunch of questions earlier has another question. I'm gonna kind of spin your question a little bit here, Peter. And we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll exit on, on this one because we do have to clear the room here. Uh, so this is more for Trevor. Um, as the A22 comes out, I know you've got a marketing background. It's kind of your jam, right? So how do you imagine, if, if you had it today, if you had the A22 today, you had a pipeline of product, what would you do from a marketing perspective to try to reach those new users? Like to, because you you said you want to sell it to new people. What would you do to sell it to those new people? How would you find them? Well, you know, the thing is, uh, it, the, the, the web is full of marketing people. Uh, so when someone says I'm a marketing person, actually, I'm, uh, yes, I do market. I have done marketing in the past, but really I'm a, a person that likes to get things done, so I find it very frustrating when things drag out and get slowed down by by outside events. So I, I would really attack, and that's the wrong word to use, attack, but I, I would attack all of the, I would go through to all of the various forums, all of the various websites, I would blitz it, and I'd make really good offers for the A1222+, plus, uh, and we would really just go for it. In, uh, and really push it because let's face it if you get the price down to I, I bought a mister system recently and I think it was about just under 400 euros um, I did it because one I could afford it because it wasn't too expensive and two it, 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 it covered a need a niche that I had I wanted to try out FPGAs I was writing the book I, and I was really keen to I tried to get a vampire as well but after three months, no one's come back to me still. Um, but I wanted to actually really you know, get a feel for what these these classic Amiga products were like. Uh, and the mist is very good. It's extremely slow, 
because I'm used to OS4 and, and PowerPC. And, and I imagine I'll get the same when I get my Mr. I imagine I'll, I'll, it'll be a bit faster, but it'll be the same kind of thing. So what are we trying to get? Are we trying to pick up all the mega users? Are we trying to get people who want a cool idea, a cool product? Uh, with the C64 Mini, which uh, I picked one up recently, um, I did it for the uh, C64 Maxi, sorry. I did it because I'm an old Commodore fan, but I wanted to see what a real, you know, a new keyboard felt like. And they did a pretty good job. Uh, but what, what did they do? They did uh, Kickstarter campaigns, you know, big publicity thing. We don't do that in the Amiga world, or we haven't been doing that. But there's a massive retro crowd out there now. So although we like to think next generation is out there with the best, we know it's really advanced retro. So we're going to have to hit that retro crowd. We're going to have to excite the retro crowd with a product which you can get in, plug it in, and it works. It can't be something where you have to have this, this, this detailed knowledge and skill set built up over 25, 30 years, which we all have in the Amiga world. We're going to have to have something that plugs in and works. So I think we've got some work to do on that side. I mean, initially, obviously, we want old Amigas to come back and say, hey, that does feel like an Amiga. It's just faster, it's better, and it does this, that, and the other. But I think we need to go further than that. I think we need to actually produce a product which is almost turnkey, and you don't need a lot of expertise to get started. And that's why these retro platforms, you know, the, 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 the minis that are coming out, there's minis for all of the retro products now. Uh, they didn't start on Amiga, but you know, Amiga's caught up. Uh, that's why it, it's become, you know, you go to any Amiga show, even now, even though I can't attend the shows, I see the videos, everyone's got some FPGA device running multiple retro systems. But no one's got one that runs OS4. Uh, actually, or more for OS for that point, that matter. Uh, so, um, which are really more modern uh, versions of those classic systems. Again, a long-winded answer to a very simple question. Sorry. No worries, no worries. Well, mm. gentlemen, uh, I'm going to give you parting words um, as we wind down MUS 21 uh, day one uh, and prepare ourselves for the banquet, uh, which is going to be a visual feast for the uh, attendees as well as the, the people uh, watching on the screen. Uh, uh, why don't I, I'm going to start with Steve, if he has any parting words, and then I'll, I'll hand it off to you. Oh, I think I, before, before I do something, I think Bill has a question. Is that Bill there? Yeah, it's Bill. Where's my whiskey, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had that really cool whiskey a couple of years ago. <laughs> oh, no question? Okay. The big question I have is, he's still working on the file system. It's pretty cool. Those guys are, I have a, a, a used Odyssey went into my hard drive. Yeah. I'm working on educational programs. So we're done in the subdirectory, subdirectory, in a file system. On the other systems, it will pick up uh, uh, my HTML file is fine, but on Odyssey it won't. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still working on the classes, right? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, yeah, Tony Wyatt's the uh, expert there. Boy, he, he's been working hard on it. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> yep, definitely. <laughs> and the whiskey came out. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So you, you asked about parting words. So uh, all I can say is, uh, I, I know things are slow, <laughs> but uh, but we are moving forward. We are moving forward. We haven't uh, we haven't b abandoned things, and things are moving. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling more optimistic this year. <laughs> so <laughs> last year was kind of a write off because for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, Feel, feel more optimistic this year that we'll get some uh, uh, some good products out the door this time, you know, in the next few months. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, Trevor, take us home. Well, oh, I'm really going to miss the AAA fun at Ami West. It's for me, it's one of the best things about Ami West. Oh, oh, and what does AA stand for? You keep saying that. I'm like, I don't. What after show that? Amiga. After show Amiga activities. <laughs> after. What after show Amiga activities? 
and we get activities. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's what we do. It's what we do at night. You know, it's what we do when we've stopped all the uh, the show. It, it's about people, really, and, and that's what the Amiga is about. Really, you go around the world, you meet people, and you're all like-minded, and you can you can discuss, you can argue, you can you can have a few drinks. Uh, in Steve's case, it's a drink of Coke. Coca-Cola, no, uh, <laughs> but you, you can have a few drinks and stay up all night and um, get crazy. So I'm going to miss that. Um, but I do. I'm. I'm. Opt- like Steve said, I'm pretty optimistic now. That that email last night was really good. Yes, <laughs> uh, that's a long time coming. That's, that's a long, good. long, long time coming. <laughs> and as I, I wrote in a blog recently, you know, if everyone thinks this is easy and you just throw money at it. Have at it. You can do it. Fine, go do it. It's not. There's a, there's a, there's a lot to this, and and uh, we didn't talk about lawsuits once, which is brilliant. So um, uh, I'm 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 hopeful that uh, we can look forward to the future, and just, and actually enjoy our hobby. We're crazy enough. Let's just enjoy our hobby. Okay, so someone did ask, Steve, can you go wiggle the balls? <laughs> <laughs> I don't necessarily want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> They're real. My, my balls are real. Oh. Okay. Well, look, we miss you guys here. Do you really? Everybody couldn't make it for whatever reason. You know, we get it. Pandemic, endemic. Hopefully next year we'll, we'll be past all that and we can come back and have multi-core tables for sale at the show floor. That's a dream I've had and worked hard to try to materialize. The show's still here. We're waiting. <laughs> the balls are here. Guys. <laughs> okay. So thank you guys. Have a lovely night. Appreciate all the updates and everything and, and hopefully we'll be able to dial into the, uh, dial into the banquet. So I'm going to let them go by killing the Zoom streams. Um, and let me press this button. So we'll cut there and adjust this. Real time narration. Um, so for the uh, folks local, uh, everyone, Alex, everyone else, everyone, show of hands, who has a raffle ticket already? Who's got the raffle tickets? Raffle. For the raffle. Uh, okay, for the raffle, you buy the raffle tickets online. There's a thing called the internet, there's a thing called websites. We've got one, I know it's kind of newfangled, but you go pick the number of tickets. We've got over $1,500 worth of items in the raffle this year. It's freaking fantastic. I want to win them all. I bought a lot of tickets. All the money goes to the club. Um, and our sponsors, let me hit the sponsor page because I, I built the animation, it's kind of fun. By the way, uh, Hollywood has a randomized intro that I said for all these, so every time I do it, they each get their own new random ones. Anywho, um, tons of sponsors, tons Spons. of great items. Go online, nus.net, go to the raffle page, buy a couple raffle tickets. For those attending the banquet this evening, we have a very special giveaway. Um, we're going to have to clear the room here in a couple of minutes, uh, including the center tables. If you have something on a center table and they're coming to set up, I've asked Brian to put it in my trunk. <laughs> so if you leave it on the center table before you leave, consider it it's no longer yours. We'll take it home with us. Um, anything else, Brian, before we, we shut this down and start kicking people out? Uh, no, I, I think we're good for that. Uh, and the uh, the actual uh, the actual cool thing that we're going to be giving away at the banquet also involves a raffle. Who has one of those raffle tickets? Oh, you don't have your raffle ticket yet? Oh my gosh! Well then, I uh, yeah, you don't actually need one because we already have your name. So your name is going to be entered in the raffle, and we'll have a very interesting way of choosing that name at the banquet. So we'll see y'all there. I, I, I need everybody to leave between 5:30, which is five minutes from now, and seven o'clock. The doors will be open. Our caterers coming in to set up the banquet line over on that side of the room, like they always do. 
So please do uh, help us by clearing the center tables. Uh, there's three round tables. tables. Two more tables will be brought in. Uh, and then we'll uh, see you all at 7 o'clock for the banquet. Everybody who bought a banquet ticket, bring it with you. That's the way you get it.